Welcome to my channel, Fifi Creates. I'm Felicia. Let's craft something together. So if you're anything like me, you got yourself a sublimation printer and you picked up every blank you can possibly think of. You put your name on everything. Everyone got a sublimation gift that year, including some blanks that probably were not intended for that purpose. It's fun, I know. So during my occasional trip to Michael's, I found myself strolling down the journal aisle and I came across this. This is the Artist Loft Artist Level 2 journal with dotted paper inside, 80 pound paper. It's a really good journal. It's got this nice, beautiful, metallic look to it with rose gold accents. Now, I wasn't going to personalize this much, but then I came across a few videos where people were subbing on the five below journals without the help of laminate sheets. So join me as we play a game of Will It Sub? Okay, so here's what we're going to need. We have our journal here some butcher paper. I'm not too sure how my heat press is going to handle this, so my Cricut Easy Press is going to earn its keep today. Off to the side, you'll see a sublimation printer with sublimation ink in it. I'm going to be using the HTV Ront sublimation paper. So here we are in Canva. And here I'm showing you just some examples that I came up with uh, for the cover. As I do most of the planning here in Canva, if I'm not using Procreate in my iPad or anything else of that nature. So again, I went on ahead and I measured the journal cover top to bottom. So I'm getting approximately between uh, six by eight inches. So again, up here, you can see where I did a new canvas size of six by eight inches. And then I just do a whole bunch of pages and come up with some general ideas. So this was the first one, um, which I kind of liked because I liked that, uh, that idea to make it look like it's plush. And then this one didn't care for it too much. So I stopped and kept moving. And then we came up with this one some watercolor accents in the back room, nice little paper banner. And then keeping with the rose gold idea. So I wanted something that was going to show the metallic background as much as possible and have a lot of white showing through as that color originally is pretty good. And mixing too many colors with that is not going to have the best results for sublimation since that is not a white journal. So I still wanted to keep with this. But then this one kind of started to speak to me. So this one is the one that we're going to use today. I'm going to go ahead and print this one out. I'm going to download it first, put it into Publisher. But first what I want to do is what I wasn't going to do originally was put something on the back of the journal. So I think I'm going to duplicate this page. And then I'm going to take out the banner and the heart and then leave this as a background because I want the background to be a little bit more plain. Now, because I can't unfold this journal and kind of lay it flat properly, I'm not gonna do like a full one with just the, with the spine as well. I'm gonna break this up into a front and the back and I'm just gonna leave the spine as it is or decorate it some other different way. So again, we're gonna download this one and this for the back. So again, I'm going to download page three and page four. Oh, that's pretty too. No, no, no. Three and four. And then I'm going to bring it into publisher. So 
So here we are in Publisher. I'm going to go to Insert, Pictures. Let's go to my Downloads. Open that up. Let's do the cover. Now this is already coming in at six by eight. I'm going to make this slightly bigger. Just so that I can make sure I'm getting edge to edge. Okay, let's go on ahead and add another page. Insert this picture for the back. Again, making this one slightly larger. All right. Let's go file, print. And I have my 4760 selected. Let's go to printer properties. Premium presentation, I. Okay, and then on more options, I'm going to go to custom, advanced, and Adobe RGB 2.2. We're going to mirror this since we are sublimating. I'm going to turn high speed off. There's not a lot of image here, so I'm not going to adjust the amount of ink I put down, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and print this and then we will be Here's right back. Images look like after they've been printed, got the front and you've got the back. So let's get ourselves all set up with the heat press in place and we'll go ahead and sublimate the journal. All right, so we've got the heat press over here off to the side being up to 365 degrees. So now we're going to start with the front of the planner or the journal, whichever one you want to call it. I'm going to take our image, right? And because I made this a little bigger than the actual size, I should be able to line this up and then tape it down. Should have had tape ready. <laughs> Let's do that again. All right, there we go. So I'm going to take this now, turn it over so we can press it from the top down. I got a piece of duct paper here. Now, normally, I don't have a problem with this sublimation paper bleeding through, but I want to be on the safe side. So now I'm going to take my heat press and I'm going to go on ahead and have it set for 365 at 60 seconds. I'm going to see that and see how that works. And I'm going to use a lot of force when I'm pressing it down. Feel for the edge here. All right, let's see what we've got. Looks like a sublimated fine. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Take off the tape here. Wow, this is hot. Oh no. That did not work at all.
We tried to. I want to say it was my pressure. Because there's an image there. Just not the best impression of it. And here we are. That's how much is left. So I'm going to see if I can't rig my heat press and see if I can't get that to work better. Because I think I didn't have enough pressure. Let's see what I can do. All right. So this is what you guys did not see me do. This is the back. I went ahead and took my easy press and turned up the temperature all the way to 385. And although it's not the best impression, I did get one in comparison to the front. And I honestly believe it's also because I did not have nearly enough pressure. Because you can see here, this is clearly darker on the edges than it is here in the middle. So I gotta do it again. <sighs> okay, so here clearly I must be overly frustrated with my lack of creative problem solving abilities because I went silent here. So voiceover it is. So here you see me using the second uh, metallic journal that I have and I printed out another image from the sublimation uh, printer. So I'm just going to go on ahead and line it up here and tape it down. Now I'm trying to use my heat press here because it has become apparent to me that using the easy press was not necessarily working out for me. So I wanted to try to get east, uh, you know, even decent pressure. So I'm going to use it this way. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough clearance on this heat press to use it with the book just flat out as it is. Um, it just does, I'm not going to be able to close it. So I figured, let me go on ahead and try it with just the lid and the rest of the book hanging off the side because I can't lay this flat in the heat press as that will damage the book and you still won't have the right pressure with the way the book has been made. Now the heat press is heating up to what it says to be 385. Now I'm going to tell you, your girl is in the market for a new heat press because this one was a cheap one over Amazon. And I don't think that the temperature that it says it's labeled for is actually the temperature. I haven't actually tested it, but you'll see why in a little bit. 385 was the wrong way to go here. So again, I'm just going ahead. I'm loading this in with just the lid. And here is the result and it is stuck that 385 is really really strong and you can tell it started to melt the cover and it still didn't take well I mean it made an even impression it was just too warm and even then the image doesn't come through as well as I thought it would so here you get to see it a little bit up close but still not the results we we're going for All right, so here you guys see me using this white journal, same journal type, just not metallic. It's just a plain matte white with that kind of pebble finish. So I went on ahead and I taped it onto the back. So we're gonna go on ahead here and try this again. I'm over here using the heat press, again, the Cricut Easy Press, because my heat press, the, the pressure just, I can't get it right. And the temperature is just too variable, varies too much. So I'm going to come back over here and just try this. And if this doesn't work, we're going to do the tried and true.
again as much pressure as you can give it 385 for 60 seconds quickly so you have less likely the tape is going to destroy the inner part of the planer. See it peeling there and there. All right, let's see. This one, no. Oh, no. Oh, and I forgot the sticker. I want to stay there. So she's subbed, but <clears throat> the paper is stuck on there. So I'm going to go wet this and see if I can't get as much of this off. All right, I got as much of the paper off of this as I'm willing to do <laughs> before I just call this a fail. So now. We'll do it the hack way. Time to go find my laminate sheets. All right, so here's the front. I got my half of my laminate sheet that I already cut in half. This is a five mil. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this down here. Let's actually try to put these out of the way. I lower the temperature on my heat press, the Cricut Easy Press to 360. I'm only gonna tack this down for 15 seconds. as best I can put in the corners while it is still hot okay I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down I'll be right back all right so I have it trimmed and I'm gonna go back in later with my the mini easy press and kind of just push them down the sides, get it as close as I can to try to avoid this peeling up, which is the problem that I have with this laminate workaround. So once again, got the front here. We're gonna go ahead and center it up. Easy press. And keep it down. Okay, turn this over. Put your paper. Kind of crease it so I can see where it is. And 45 seconds, 360. see if this day was a complete fail <laughs> oh yeah nope and this goes again back to my fault because that would have been fine had my pressure been right and she was not So 
So if you get your pressure right, maybe the, the pillow was a bad idea. This can be done. I've seen it done plenty of times. But I'm not redoing this. <laughs> So again, the laminate can work. You just got to get your pressure right. I guess there's a dip here in the middle because that's even where it messed up last time. So, because that looks great. <laughs> oh, well. Can't win them all, right? So, to recap. Will it sub? In my opinion, no. <laughs> Can it sub? Possibly. I would love to see and hear, almost can't even wait for you guys in the comments to tell me what I did wrong. Because I'm sure there's plenty of you who are probably yelling at the screen who've done this already. I refuse to buy any more, but it would still be nice to know how it's done. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.